Yeah, very best of luck. Now, after the Bank of England raised interest rates to 5% last week, millions of people are facing a huge increase in their monthly mortgage repayments. So, if you're due to remortgage soon, what should you do? The mortgage mum, Sarah Tucker, is here with her advice. Good morning to you, yeah. Sarah. Hiya, Sarah. Uh, we've been, obviously, inundated with this. Um, mm. I've got... Um, Ross has sent a message in this morning. Now, is it ever wise to get an interest-only mortgage? I'm considering swapping to interest-only mortgage to try and lower my monthly payments. I would love some advice on this, and is it a good idea? Yeah, it's one of the things that when Chancellor um, Jeremy Hunt met with the banks on Friday, it's one of the things he's put in place as part of the mortgage charter. Um, it will, it's a short-term measure. When you go interest only, you are paying just the interest on your mortgage. So, of course, at some point, if it's 25-year term, you're going to be left with the mortgage and, therefore, you're going to have to find a way of paying it off. Um, that's going to mean at age 60 or 75, whenever the end of your term is, that you're going to potentially have to leave your house and, obviously, you're not going to want to do that. So, if you are looking at interest only, it could be a good option to reduce your monthly payment for a short while but it's not the overall long-term answer. You're going to need to get really good advice around that so that you can make a plan. And how do people normally pay it off at the end of the term? So, normally, you're going to a repayment mortgage, and that means every month you're paying part of the interest and part of the balance. So, your balance will just ever so slightly come down every month over however long a period your term is. So, at the end of your interest only, you would then switch on to repayment, so you'd have to take out yes. a longer term? But you'll be age 75 or, seven, or earlier um, or even later, and you won't necessarily be working. Therefore, to to be able to afford a mortgage, you need to be able to demonstrate affordability and pe pensions aren't necessarily going to be able to do that. Do you want to be paying a mortgage into your later life? And then we come into something entirely different called later life lending and that's inevitably going to mean people don't own their properties and can't pass them down to their children. There is, there is talk of offering short-term interest yes. only, isn't it? Like six months. That's right. Which means you're not paying capital back over those six months. Yes. So those payments will be loaded on when? At the end or when you return to major payments? We're or... waiting to see what the lenders are actually going to do to translate what's happened on Friday into the real market terms. So whether that's, like you say, bolted on or whether you're going to have to extend your term or whether your monthly payments will be a bit higher for the rest of the mortgage. It's a good short-term measure, as I say, some people are facing the end of their deals. There's 2.4 million people coming up to the end of their deal between now and the end of 2024, and they don't know how they're going to afford their mortgage payments. Just give you a breath to get organised. Yeah, it? exactly. Um, I think Jane's ans asking a question a lot yeah. of people will be asking today. I'm wondering when I should be looking at a remortgage, is it ever too early? Um, Yes, it's, it can be too early if it's two years away. You know, we don't know what rates are going to do. We'd say six months before is the perfect time to look. So if your mortgage is coming up from December onwards, it might seem really far away, but look at it now. Speak to your bank, speak to a broker and get advice. And then you really can look at your savings, look at your money and actually identify what this is going to do for your disposable income. Okay. Um, next up, we've got David. What will happen when my fixed mortgage runs out? So, our fixed mortgage is due to run out at the end of July. Right. We have a shared ownership, but our payments are going up significantly. Mm -hmm. And the rent and the service charge. Now, we are starting to have a real struggle. Is there any alternative help with shared ownership mortgages? We don't know necessarily if it's going to be translated to shared ownership. We're hoping so. Um, it looks like it's going to be a mortgage charter, so hopefully that means all mortgage lenders. Um, what Martin Lewis influenced and what um, the Chancellor has put in place um, means that if they are coming to the end of their mortgage in July, so that's next month, so they haven't obviously sorted anything out, they can call their bank. They can say to their bank without any repercussions, I am worried, I cannot pay my mortgage, what do I do? And the bank can give them options now. Whereas before, they might not have called them because they were worried, what if the bank then gives me a bad mark on my credit report? What if they make a note about it? Um, so now people can ring their banks, and that's the real key message here is get advice, speak to your bank, speak to a broker. What do those options look like? Well, at the moment, the three headlines are um, they can switch to interest only, they can extend their repayment term and they can change their mind up to six months in advance. In practical terms, that's really the most practical help you're going to get. Um, if you are staring at a repossession, they're going to give people an extra 12 months. Now, a year's a long time. A lot can change in a year. Um, I've had a baby in the last year, so, you know, a lot can happen, um, positively and negatively, but it just gives people time to get their heads around it and to try and hopefully change their situation. Um, that is the real practical things that people can do, but really it's about getting advice and really looking at their situation 
and, and asking themselves, what do I realistically have to do here? You've kind of answered this question. We're going to read it yeah. from Mark because it's such a stark illustration of the effect mm -hmm. of his interest rate rises. I, I, I had to read this a couple of times. It's actually shocking. Yeah. It comes from Mark. My tracker mortgage has gone up from £300 a month to £1,200 a month. He's a single parent. He's really starting to struggle. Is there anything I can do? This is sleepless night stuff. Is. This is terrifying. It is terrifying. It's not just a couple of hundred pounds anymore. You're talking about, like in this case, hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And people don't have it. They have energy bills rising. They have the cost of living rising. Some people just simply do not have the money. Um, he's on a tracker rate, which means every month for the last 13 months, his payment has gone up. So... A fixed rate mortgage is as it sounds, it would secure a rate, however high it might look at the moment, and you know what you're paying for the rest of that fixed rate, so two years, five years. Um, I can't obviously advise Mark to go on a fixed rate mortgage. I would love to know why he chose a tracker rate, why he was advised to do that. There's lots of reasons why people choose a tracker rate. Perhaps they're gambling on the market or perhaps there's another reason. Um, tracker rates don't have early repayment penalties, for example. So if you're planning on moving, mm. you might do that so that you can jump ship quicker. Um, what he needs to do again, ring your bank, ring your broker. You know, really actually look at the options. <sighs> £300 to £1,200 a month, hopefully. He might be able to go on interest only. He might be able to extend his term if he spoke to his bank. That might help, but it's not going to go back to £300, in the, all honesty. The problem with a lot of this is, I guess, is that, and we all know this, yeah. organising a mortgage or a remortgage or changing the terms is a real hassle. <laughs> and if you've ever... I mean, Mark's a single parent, he's it busy is. dropping kids. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a, it takes a lot of time to do it. You've got to get all your books together, all like... I can understand why people put it on the long finger. I and then can. you're hit with this. Yeah, I can. And, and look, nobody wants to... It's on your to-do list. It's not the most exciting yeah. thing, let's be honest. And, and it's not a glamorous thing anymore because you know you're going to be hit with bad news and some people would rather avoid it for as long as possible. Avoid, avoid, avoid. But it really is the best thing to do. If you speak to a good broker, they'll try and make it easy for you. There's apps to upload your documents on your phone now so you can do it while you're... You know, I've got three children. I know how busy it is um, to try and do these things, which is why you can take photos of your documents on your phone now. You don't have to sit and you know, scan them all in. So there's little things, but I'm not going to lie, we do need to see the paperwork and there's no way around that, to be honest. Um, we've got a message from Sally next. Now, should I wait six months before buying a house? My partner and I have finally managed to save enough money to put a deposit down on a house. And with yeah. the recent mortgage announcements, we are thinking we should maybe wait six months. Is, is it worth doing this? Um, are the interest rates the new normal? I think they're a bit higher than the new normal, but I don't know that they're going to come down in six months, in all honesty. We don't know what's going to happen. I just want to caveat that. But, you know, in the next two years, they might come down. It's always a gamble whenever you get on the property market that you're hitting it at the wrong time. Um, but the property market is cyclical. It goes around. You know, what comes up must come down eventually. And if you're in it for the long run, which you should be, you know, if you're buying and selling property at the same time, it's always going to be relative. It's really about can that person afford it at the current rates and how desperate are they to get on the property ladder right now and that requires a conversation one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it's a kind of a, a, a crucial time as well if you think you want to sell because I guess when interest yeah. rates go up, demand goes down, mm. property prices fall, so if you're thinking actually the mortgage is going up, I'm going to bail, yes. you, you probably need to do it quite soon, do you? Yeah, yes, and, and well the thing is it depends if you're selling and then buying again because then it's relative, isn't it? You might get a cheap house, a cheaper house but you're going to sell at a cheaper amount. So if you're selling to just exit out of the property market, um, you're not going to get the best value for your it's money. It's me heartburn, this conversation. It gives so me stressful. palpitations. Honestly. We do it all day, it's every just day. It's very difficult. It? Um, just quickly on this one from Catherine. Uh, if I can, shall I pay off my whole mortgage? So I, I have the money to pay off the mortgage. Do I pay all the mortgage off in one lump sum? Um, it, is, it comes to um, a fixed end in 2023. Um, I mean, I would always say, yes, you know, if you can clear your mortgage, great. That's our job, to try and help people pay off their mortgage and own their homes in, in their entirety. And not many people are in that position. But, yes, just make sure you don't do it before your early repayment charge runs out because people think, if I won the lottery, I'll pay off my mortgage. But actually, they get charged um, an early repayment penalty if they pay too much off. It's normally, on your credit, on your mortgage offer, it's normally a max of 10%, so she's going to need to wait. But yes, if you can yeah. do. Love banks it. Oh, banks like mortgages, right? <laughs> yes, they make them they a lot do. of money. Yeah. They do. They Thank really you, do. Sarah. That was great brilliant. Advice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 